This line is looking straight towards all these wildebeest, not those ones in the distance, but those are some. Take a look to the right. There is a sea of wildebeest in front of these are. And where do they come from? Is quite something. They've actually just quietened down. And I'm hoping they're gonna get going again. I'm not sure why all of a sudden they really started making a racket. Maybe they've come across some other predators up ahead of them. But look at that sea of canoes. Oh, absolutely epic. I'm so, so happy to be sharing this with you. We are very, very lucky to be here enjoying this fascinating, fascinating migration. Chris, you would like to know what the difference is between a wildebeest and a gnu. There is zero difference, zilch, nut, nada. They are the same things, they are just called different, uh, different names. Up in East Africa, they are called gnus. And usually down in South Africa, on uh, Juma, where Byron is, we would to call them wildebeest. They can also be called wildebeest up here, though. It's not a set, set thing. And you get different types of gnus or wildebeest. This is the bearded, white bearded wildebeest that you get up in East Africa. The few wildebeest that you get down uh, on Juma are the blue wildebeest. They look fairly similar to these, but are different. And then you also get another type in South Africa called the black wildebeest, but not on Juma. So a number of different types of gnus roll the African plains. Roll or roam, I mean. <laughs> Sure. Just want to give it a minute or two to see if they don't get loud again. They've kind of quietened down. But and I'm told it's still sounding pretty impressive, but I promise you, just a few moments before you joined us, there was an almighty, almighty chorus coming from all of them. How ridiculous is that view? Sure. Beautiful. Now, something I discussed with Manu last night as we were roaming around looking for these fine two young males that we got lucky to bump into. And I'm wondering if these herds are not kind of the initial herds to start heading south back towards Tanzania. It is something that I probably haven't been reminding myself enough, and maybe some of you have also fallen into the same trap as me. The, the migration is not going to stay here forever. It's going to be leaving in the next few months. So the views that we are getting now will be no longer. This will just be not empty seas of grass, but we will not have nearly as much game around. Close on one and a half millions are going to vacate this area. Beautiful. So best we enjoy it. There's no set time as to when they leave or when they arrive each year in Kenya. So we cannot be certain, but usually they spend from about the beginning of July, August, September, October. Those are the kind of four main months that we can expect to see them. So they are not going to be here too much longer. I may have got my month slightly mixed up there. I may be, it may be June, July, August, September. But either way, they are going to be heading back at some point in the next month or so, possibly two. And it all depends on rain and a few variables that we are not actually certain of. Otherwise, people would be able to predict the migration every year, which would be very useful, especially for lodges, because, of course, a lot of people come here hoping to see the migration. And if you come in the early stages or the latter stages of it, you run the risk of missing out on some of the action. Thankfully, though, most of the lodges within these reserves have got huge traversing opportunities. So you may just have to drive for two hours to get to where the migration is. Not, not much different to how we were acting for the beginning of the eight-part uh, TV series or as the migration arrived, even with the internet 
internet shows Brent and Jamie were in the southern parts of the reserve staying at Salah's camp uh, which looked after them while they were down there and they received the herds as they arrived as they crossed over the sand river from Tanzania into Kenya so we too will probably follow them herds back south towards the action to say goodbye to them and there's talk and whisperings of hopefully going into Tanzania to go and see the carving in, I think it's January, February in the southern Serengeti Plains. We may be sending just one vehicle there to go and cash in on all of the action, as well as cuteness. Sadly, a lot of the cuteness is killed shortly after becoming cute. Um, there's a lot of predators that are mainly focusing on not adult wildebeest or young wildebeest like they are here. They have the benefits of being able to pick off all the newborn young. So that's something quite interesting. Okay, well, from the chorus of these wildebeest, we are going to be sending you back down to Byron to see how his chorus of alarm calls has turned out.